So let's assume that you want to get the kids' attention and the kids are talking. What do you do? I've seen teachers take five minutes to get the kids' attention. So here's what we're going to do, because I think we lose a lot of instructional time just getting the kids' attention back. For example, if it takes you two minutes to get their attention, and you do this a few times during a classroom, we just lose a lot of instructional time. So here's an attention management which you may decide to use. You can see that there are five fingers up. Now we all have our own personal teaching styles. Mine is I just don't talk when other people are talking. So here's how it works. I'll raise my hand and when you see my hand up, it's your obligation to raise your hand also. And if someone is sitting next to you is talking, it's your responsibility to bring that person's attention to us. When all hands are up, I will continue. And of course, it's rather obvious the idea is two ears listening and two eyes watching and the mouth closed. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to share with you what I do in a usual seminar. I will say, okay, here's three things I'd like you to do. Number one, give the person the name that you wish to be called. My given name is Marvin. And when I answer the phone and I hear Marvin, I know it's a sales solicitation. Anybody who knows me calls me Marv. Now, I know so many Debras who prefer Deb. I know so many Allens who prefer Al. Uh, Oswald never goes by his given name. He goes by Ozzy. So first, the name that you wish to be called. Remember what Dale Carnegie said and how to win friends and influence people. He said, a person's name is to that person the most beautiful sound in any language. But of course, it's got to be the name that the person wished to be called. Now, when I was in the fourth grade and the teacher went around and asked, what name do you wish to be called? And I said, Marv. I immediately was endeared to that teacher. It's amazingly simple. Just call a kid the name that he wishes to be called. Secondly, tell to your neighbor, your learning buddy, something a professional about yourself, where you teach, your favorite subject. Uh, so something professional about yourself. Then something personal about yourself. In my case, I played the great Highland bagpipes. I had to name my publishing company something, so I called it Piper Press. I play a type of music that very few pipers play. It's called Pibrach. And my point is that in, when you talk to one other person, I want you to tell something personal about yourself to that person. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, with one person and one person only, give the name you wish to be called, something professional about yourself, and something personal about yourself. When you hear, see my hand come up, then that's what I'd like your attention. Okay, let's do that now. Now, that was pretty good, but it took us 12 seconds. And again, I want to repeat that we lose a lot of instructional time just getting the kids' attention back. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to stand up in just a moment with someone you have not talked to today, and let's do the same thing. Name you wish to be called, what you do professionally, and something personal about yourself. And let's see if we can beat that 12 seconds. Okay? Go. Three seconds. Amazing. Now, notice what I did. I first taught a procedure. I explained it. I taught it. I modeled it for you. I then had you practice it. And, but I was not negative. I didn't say that was not good enough. I was positive. I said, I bet we can do it in a shorter period of time. People, and especially kids, love a challenge. And you did also, because we went from 12 seconds down to 3 seconds. The important part to remember is, if you have any problem, you want to establish some procedure that's the key to classroom management. 